Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about Neisseria gonorrhea. Neisseria gonorrhea is a gram-negative diplococci, which causes gonorrhea, a sexually transmitted infection, which, if left untreated, can cause serious complications such as septic arthritis and pelvic inflammatory disease. Gonorrhea is the second most common bacterial sexually transmitted infection worldwide, after chlamydia. Rates of gonorrhea infection have been increasing thanks to the emergence of broad-spectrum antibiotic-resistant organisms. Let's talk about the life cycle of Neisseria gonorrhea. Neisseria gonorrhea is a gram-negative, obligate, fastidious diplococcus bacteria. Like all gram-negative bacteria, Neisseria gonorrhea possesses a cell envelope, which is composed of an inner cytoplasmic membrane, a middle layer of peptidoglycan, and an outer membrane. The outer membrane contains lipooligosaccharides, or LOS, which is an endotoxin. The outer membrane also contains the phospholipid and a variety of proteins that contribute to cell adherence, tissue invasion, and resistance to host defenses. Neisseria gonorrhea has many dynamic polymeric protein filaments, called pili, which allow the bacteria to adhere to and move along surfaces of cells. Neisseria gonorrhea is transmitted sexually, either oral, genital, or anal routes. Neisseria gonorrhea can also be transmitted perinatally, from mother to infant. Risk factors for Neisseria gonorrhea and its infection include age 20 to 29, having multiple sexual partners, having unprotected sex, having known partners with gonorrhea, men who have sex with men, current or prior history of sexual transmitted infections. Let's talk about the pathophysiology of Neisseria gonorrhea and how it causes all the complications associated with it. Firstly, the acquisition of Neisseria gonorrhea is through sexual contact, mainly as we have learned. Neisseria gonorrhea infects primarily columnar epithelial cells. In this scenario, it is in the urethra or the vaginal epithelium. The pili of the Neisseria gonorrhea attaches and adheres to the columnar epithelial cells. Adherence to the cells is also facilitated by opacity proteins, termed OPA proteins. Neisseria gonorrhea have many virulent factors, really things that help them with their infection. The gonococcal lipooligosaccharide, the LOS, is an endotoxin and causes ciliostasis and sloughing of ciliated epithelial cells, basically damaging the cells. Lipooligosaccharides also activates complement and immune cells such as the macrophages and neutrophils, which also contributes to the acute inflammatory response. Neisseria gonorrhea have something called IgA protease. This enzyme inactivates the host immunoglobulins, IgA, by cleaving the molecule in the hinge region, allowing the bacteria to pass this area without any problems. Neisseria gonorrhea also has a capsule which helps evade phagocytosis, basically hide or not be phagocytized by the macrophages and neutrophils. They also contain porin proteins, termed pore proteins, which help evade immune system. All these virulent factors help, essentially, with Neisseria gonorrhea entering the cell. They help the bacteria with mucosal invasion whilst evading the immune system. Mucosal invasion by Neisseria gonorrhea results in a local inflammatory response that produces a purulent exudate. Transmission can subsequently occur to another patient with, through sexual contact. Lipooligosaccharides attaches to sperm cells and likely 
leads to transmission from males to uninfected sexual partners. Neisseria gonorrhea may ascend the urogenital tract and cause complications. So in men, Neisseria gonorrhea causes urethritis, epididymitis, and prostatitis. Symptoms in men occur in more than 90% of infections, and this will manifest as urogenital gonorrhea. Males will describe dysuria with urethritis, purulent urethral discharge, yellow and green in color. They may also complain of abdominal discomfort. When Neisseria gonorrhea causes an infection in the urogenital tract in females, they can cause acute endometritis, salpingitis, which is inflammation of the fallopian tubes, and acute pelvic inflammatory disease. These conditions may lead to infertility long term, chronic pelvic pain, and ectopic pregnancy. Neisseria gonorrhea can also disseminate from the fallopian tubes through the peritoneum to the liver capsule, resulting in something called perihepatitis, termed Fitzhugh Curtis syndrome. Symptoms of urogenital gonorrhea in females occur only in 50% of cases, and many will not manifest the symptoms, interestingly. In females, symptoms include cervicitis, which is inflammation and pain in the cervix. They also have purulent cervical discharge, yellow and malodorous, dysuria, as well as abdominal pelvic pain. Neisseria gonorrhea may invade the lymphatics and blood vessels as well, and this can cause other complications, including inguinal lymphadenopathy, perineal, perianal, ischiorectal, and peri prostatic abscess, for example, endocarditis, as well as disseminated gonococcal infection, which is characterized by the classic triad, hemorrhagic vesicopostular eruption, polyarthralgia, and tenosynovitis. Other complications can also occur in the eyes. This typically occurs in newborn babies, as they are prone to eye infection if their mother has a gonorrhea infection. Eye infection can cause permanent blindness if not treated quickly. Differential diagnosis of Neisseria gonorrhea infections are really other sexually transmitted pathogens, including chlamydia trachomitis, trachomonas vaginalis, and mycoplasma genitalium. Investigations and diagnosis is through Nucleic Acid Amplification Test, or NAT. This test is done of a urine, of the urethral or cervical discharge. Bacterial cultures can also be done of fluid from the cervix, from the blood, if it's, there is disseminated infection, of the pharynx and joint. Treatment of gonorrhea is with keftriaxone and with the addition possibly of azithromycin or doxycycline. It's important to have no sexual contact for seven days after treatment is administered. There should be no sex with partners from the last two months until the partners have been tested and treated if necessary. So in summary, Neisseria gonorrhea is a gram-negative diplococci, which causes gonorrhea, a sexually transmitted infection that is common. Neisseria gonorrhea have many virulent factors, including lipo-oligosaccharides, IgA proteases, and a capsule. They're able to evade the immune system and cause infection locally in the urogenital tract, or they can disseminate to the liver, or to the joint, as well as causing disseminated gonococcal infection with the classic triad we talked about. Treatment is with antibiotics such as keftriaxone and azithromycin. Thank you for watching.